Hi everybody, I'm Tim from TroutandFeather.com and as you can see, we have a special guest back on the show. Welcome Mr. Tom Rosenbaum. Well, thank you Tim, thank you, it's a pleasure. You're it's an welcome. honor to Listen, be on your No, show. come on, the reason I came to Vermont was to fly fish with Tom for some brook trout and some wild brown trout. And we talked about making a video as well and he said, hey, let's give the viewers some brook trout fly fishing tips. And I said, let's give them all the tips. Do not pause right now, go down to the comments and say, hey, where were you two fly fishing in Vermont? We're not gonna give you the GPS coordinates, we're not gonna give you any of that stuff, but we're gonna help you catch more brook trout. Stay tuned. All right, without any further ado, Tom, this is your show now. What do you got for us? Tips for brook trout, yeah. right? Yeah. Well, yeah. first of all, um, don't fish above 65 degrees. Take a thermometer. Um, because a lot of this fishing is really good during the summertime, particularly here in you know in the in the Northeast, and they they start to fade a little bit sooner than than browns and rainbows. So you know we we tell people to stop fishing at 68. Yeah. I, I like 65 for brook trout. They're a little bit less tolerant of warm water temperatures. Yeah. You don't want to stress them. So That's smart. Take a thermometer with you. That's number one. And look for cold water. They need cold water. They're going to be small. So uh, there's a couple things to think about. Because, because you you know you're gonna be catching fish like this I mean a tenature is a monster so you're gonna be it, it's they're beautiful wild jewels they're gonna be small so there's a couple things that you want to think about one is use a little bit bigger fly you know they'll come up I mean they, these fish are, are grabby they, you know they they've evolved in very sterile environments and they will grab anything that looks relatively edible so fly doesn't matter that much but I like to have a visible fly and I like to have one that floats well so I can see it, and it's kind of on the big side. Because sometimes these little, you know, two and three inch fish will grab that fly, and you yeah. don't really want to put a hook in those little yeah. tiny guys. Whenever you say a big hook, what are we talking about? Yeah, like 10, 12. Okay. Yeah, it's something that the little ones can't get in their mouth. Perfect. So 10s, 12s, maybe 14s, you know, sometimes. Yeah. But you don't want to go down to an 18 or a 20 or 22. You don't need to. You don't need to. And uh, you can't see them and you don't want to catch those really real dinks. No, you're going to see these small fish and you're going to say, oh, I got to go really small fly. Yeah, don't, you don't have don't. to. I mean, if they're tiny, you probably don't want to catch those at all anyway. Yeah, right. So that's important. The other thing is that they're very quick when they take a fly. They're like, boom, you know, they're like, they're like really, really quick. And you're going to miss a lot of fish. You're, you are going, you're going to miss at least half of the fish that take your fly. Don't beat yourself up. Don't agonize over it. Just move on because you're going to miss them. And everybody's going to miss my them. My number yesterday was 75%. We got to one stream and Tom was like, hey, I have my camera, Tim. Why don't you catch a brook trout so we can get a picture? And now when Tom Rosenbauer tells you to catch a fish, you're like, I got to go catch a fish. And I missed one fish and two fish and three. I don't know how many I missed in a row, but it was just one of those. And I didn't look at it as like, oh, I'm letting Tom down. It's just the fish are fast. you know. Yeah. And maybe you got to keep your line off the water a little bit more. but. They're fast, you're gonna miss fish. Just look at it as it happened, move forward from yeah. there. And the other thing is they're gonna come off a lot because you're usually fishing barbless hooks <laughs> yeah. and they're they're very wiggly, you know, yeah. when they take, they're like, ah! <laughs> and, and, and they're gonna come off. So you're not gonna land. Not, not only are you not gonna hook a lot of them, but you're not gonna land a lot of them. No. But you want that you want that one picture because they're so beautiful. You know, you do wanna be careful, keep them in the water or just just hold them briefly out of the water yeah, in your and hand. And they're, they're looking at a picture right now of your fish, and you can see Tom kept his hand in the water. We tried to keep this fish just, I mean, it was back in in seconds, and this was one that didn't squirm away because most of the time you go for a picture of these, and that's yeah. it. They just, they're gone. They're gone. Yeah. So, so you know, don't wor don't beat yourself up. Again, just don't worry about it. It's not that you're striking too fast or you're not striking fast enough. It, they're just going to come off. Yeah. If you're into social media, be sure to use that hashtag trout and feather so I can see what you're posting about and I can learn basically where you're fishing, what you're fishing, the flies you're tying, all that fun stuff. Come on, where do you think I'm gonna get my future video ideas from? All of you with that hashtag trout and feather. But be sure to add trout and feather on whatever social media platform you use. I'd love to connect with all of you there. Fly types, it doesn't matter, really. I mean, you may find one's a little better than the other, but. Something you can see, parachute hairs here, chubby Chernobyl, stimulator, something like that that you can see. I like to fish dry dropper because sometimes they're very surface oriented as we saw yesterday. Most yeah. of them were on the dry, but sometimes they're, they'll, they'll eat nymphs more readily. So if you put a, a nymph on and on a short dropper, because these fish are always looking up. So you want a short dropper 
uh, when your brook trough is. The streams are shallow anyways, you don't want to keep hanging bottom. Yeah. Any old nymph, hare's ear, you know, a little bead head, something that doesn't sink the fly. Fairly bright, usually I like a hot spot on my brook trout flies. Chart I like chartreuse, but you know, red. Yeah. Red Copper John. That was yesterday. his color. Red was yeah. his color yesterday. Red uh, worked well. Go back to the dry fly. I know we talked about this in a previous video. You like to double dip when we're talking about I double about, dip. What's that I mean? I double dip. I, I dip it in fly dip first, Orvis fly dip. It's a liquid, and then I put it in the powder okay. right after. So, so this, he wants it floating. I want to no see that. I want to see that sucker. There were float. a couple times yesterday I would make a cast, and my dry fly went down. I, I would say, Tom, I think the, the nymph pulled it down, and he would just laugh. He's like, no, no, you missed a fish. That's what happened. <laughs> I double dipped that fly. <laughs> So the type of water you fish for brook trout, brook trout have evolved in very sterile environments and they want to be in the current because there isn't much food coming by and so they want to be in a place where there's maximum amount of food. So you want to look for the main current thread, at least in the waters I fish. Now yeah. you, we kept, we were laughing about this because you kept throwing it in, in the frog water and I said, no, no, I ain't going to be there. Because there were a few. There, there were a few. Were a few. There Just were a few. like three. But most of the time, the, you notice they were on the sides yep. of the tongues of the faster current because they're going to be in a place where there's lots of food coming down because there isn't a lot of yeah. food. So, so you, you want to stick to the kind of the main current thread. Yeah, and we were looking for depth as well, and that's yeah. it doesn't matter if I'm fishing in Pennsylvania, Vermont, it seems like when you have some depth and some current there, be ready, because it seems like there's going to be a bigger you know fish that's going to kind of inhabit that little location. Yeah. So you want to be ready for that big one. That's where they're going to be hanging. Though we got a gorgeous brook shot yesterday, and a little bit of depth, but it was just a kind of an off spot, a little bit down from that riffle. So you never know where they're going to be, which yeah. is kind of fascinating with yeah. these brook trout. Yeah, I mean, you throw your fly everywhere, but yeah. concentrate on the main current. I know it's kind of one of these things where we say every time we go fishing, we learn something. Like, I truly believe it. I mean, yesterday it was great because Tom and I just shared one rod. We had a bamboo rod. Can't talk too much about it, but it was an Orvis bamboo fly rod we were fishing with. And he let me fish first. He's like, let's go. And it was wonderful to have him kind of guide me into some of the spots. Then I would hand him the rod. He would fish. But it was really fascinating because as he's kind of alluding to, I'm used to really picking apart all these little pockets and having all these brook trout in Pennsylvania. But whenever he had the rod, it was like cast, 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 and then just hustle to the next spot. Cast, 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 hustle to the next spot. And he was very gentle with me saying, Tim, I see some really good water up there. You and were... I, I could hear, I knew what he was saying, but I was like, I got to make one more cast. But that was something by the end of the day, I was like, I was watching him fish. I'm like, this is, this is the style here. I'm going to change my methods based on what I'm seeing. You were driving me crazy. Yeah, know, How long is he going to spend in that pool? They're either going to take it. That's another thing about brook trout fishing, right? They're either going to take it on the first, second, or third cast, or, or they're not. You might as well move on, because you either spooked them or they're not there. That's right. That's right. <laughs> Don't forget, like this video so I can make more videos like this. Now, let's get back to some more tips. Hey, and before we wrap up, let me also say, you know, this is just a, a great honor having Tom on our show. I mean, Tom is, you know, he's worked for Orvis for, I believe, over 45 years, somewhere around that number. We're not going to get into all of his background, but I guess the one question I have, you know, how did you get into fly fishing specifically? I just, I always loved fishing, and I just thought it looked cool. My dad didn't fly fish. He fished with me, but worm fishing for bullheads and yeah. white perch. And I just thought it looked interesting, and uh, so I just kind of taught myself yeah, and from there it just skyrocketed yeah yeah, yeah for sure skyrocketed that's yeah. for sure <laughs> and now I mean ambassador for Orvis there's no question about it um, the one thing that I think you're known for at least in the fly fishing industry is the podcast mm, do you yeah, mind talking yeah. just briefly about that and kind of how how did that get started was that your idea was it, it was Orvis pushing it and just any insights you have into that yeah well it was actually our early on in social media when social media first you know, when, when this Facebook thing first yeah. came out and, and social media was starting to, evolve, you know, come out, uh, the, the so, our social media director said, you should do a podcast. And I said, podcast? Well, that's, <laughs> that's kind of like old tech, you know, everything's video now. And it's true. I mean, yeah. podcasts have been around for a long time. Yeah. They've really, in the past few years, they've really gone crazy. But it's old tech, yeah. right? It's, yeah. not, it's not cutting edge. Mm -hmm. And he said, you should do a podcast. And I said, well... All right, I'll try it. You know, I think it's a dumb idea, but I'll but I'll try it. <laughs> and I started out just just talking, you know, just picking a topic and talking about it. And then I started having guests, and that really opened it up to a lot more things. Uh, I never have a guest on that I know more than about the topic. So I always have guests that that I'm interested in and that I think 
my listeners will be interested in. Yeah. I mean, I take questions every week, uh, and I answer questions in a thing called the fly box. So I know what people are looking for. I know what they're interested in by these questions. So, uh, so not only do I look for guests that I'm interested in, but I look for guests that I know that my listeners, because it, it's all about the listeners, right? Yeah. It's, all, it's all about pleasing them. It's not, it's not pleasing myself. It's, it's pleasing the people who are coming on this thing to learn something. Yeah. And so. podcast, it's free. They can just download it. Yeah. Listen yeah. to it on your phone. Some com- I believe computers too. They can listen. Yeah, that you way. can listen to it anywhere. Anywhere you have an audio device. Say someone wants to send you a question. What's the email for that? Podcast? Yeah, the, the email for the podcast is podcast at Orvis And I do read all of them. I don't answer all, of them. <laughs> but <laughs> it's I do. Got to be all a good them. one to get Tom to answer because <laughs> I'm sure now doing this for however many years it's been going on. I mean, yeah, like you, 10, 11 years. You have to have a bank of these questions you've already answered. So is there a way that people can, like say, if I have a question about fly lines for uh, tarpon, can yeah. they go back in the archives and ser- is that can. searchable? It's searchable only on the Orvis Learning Center okay. at howtoflyfish.orvis.com. That's the only place it's searchable and they're keyworded so you can you can look there. But I do I do answer the same question over and over again because I realize that, hey, people aren't getting it. Yeah, right? they're, yeah. they're not getting it. Okay. Why do I lose so many brook trout when I'm dry fly fishing? Why, what, what, what am I doing wrong? Yeah. Like, yeah. Check out the podcast. Uh, I think I mentioned prior, anytime he's answering other questions, what I used to love to do, I would click pause and I would try to answer the question first just to see if my answer was like in the ballpark. It normally was, but Tom would give that one little enhancement to just up the ante with the answers. Though the downside, if my son Angelo is watching, he knows this because right away whenever I say, hey, we're going on a trip, he says, oh, do I have to listen to that fly fishing podcast again? <laughs> yeah, yes. I hear that from, you from do. listeners and their spouses yeah. and their kids. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Angelo, you do. Sorry, this is, that's, that's the cost. Once you start driving, you can listen to whatever you want. I promise you. <laughs> And I mentioned Tom being an ambassador for Orvis, but I I think really just, if we think more globally, he is absolutely an ambassador for all fly fishing. Thank you so much for everything you do. Well, thank you, Tim. Thank you. You're welcome. You're someone I look up to, so it's really just an honor being here. I look up to you as well. I I don't know about that. I really enjoy your stuff. Well, thank you. I appreciate it. Don't stop the fun yet. I talked about a ton of links and videos during the recording of this one. They're all right here in this playlist. All you have to do, click this playlist, let all that learning continue. Enjoy all that information. It's for all of you. You can thank me later.